Hi guys, this is Rita Denoyer Garcia of Becoming Awake and the Calm Mom Alliance Facebook group and the Becoming Awake YouTube channel. And I'm also the author of the Self-Compassion Project, How to Become More um, Emotionally Stronger, More Effective and Happier Through Giving Yourself a Break. And today I am talking about what emotional patterns are and what to do about them. Um, so let's just dive right into it. Have you ever noticed that you may react emotionally to different things in your life? Like maybe when you have certain conversations, you always get angry, or maybe um, you feel very lonely at certain times of the day, or when someone cuts you off in traffic, you um, get really rageful. So you may just think, well, that's reality. That's how things are. Um, but I'm here to kind of go a little deeper than that. And I would say that we all have patterns to our emotions. Um, and sometimes they get triggered by different events. So it's, it's not to dismiss the event itself, because sometimes there are things that happen that um, are going to just bring up emotion for you um, and that everyone can see that. But sometimes things happen that maybe to someone else, they would not be a big deal or in general, it wouldn't be a big deal, but all of a sudden you find yourself having this emotional reaction to them. And those come from patterns, patterns of emotion. And the vast majority of emotional patterns that we have come from way back when we're little kids. So something happens when you're a kid, you have an emotion. It's usually, you know, an overwhelming emotion that you're not used to having as a child. No one's there to help you process the emotion or understand the emotion. In fact, maybe there are people around you telling you that you shouldn't feel that way or to, um, you know, don't, you're being a baby, don't cry, or, or um, that's nothing to be upset about, or, um, you know, people are making fun of you, or something happens where there's no one there supporting you when you're having the emotion. This happens all the time in childhood, whether it's, you know, with other kids, or with your parents, or your family, or your friends, or just, you know, with a stranger. And out of that experience, especially when you're a child, and you never process those emotions, they don't just go away, they stay within you, and then they get repeated over and over again throughout your life. And you start to think this is reality, this is just the way I am, this is this event has caused this, um, and this is the way everyone reacts. Or maybe you're asking yourself, I don't know why I feel so lonely every day at five o'clock, or I'm not sure why my mother drives me crazy so much, or I don't know why when um, someone cuts me off in traffic, I just feel so enraged. So if you're asking those questions, these could be emotional patterns for you. They're just things that get repeated over and over in your life. So the question is, why do anything about them at all? And how do you do anything about them? So the answer of why would you want to do something about an emotional pattern is, is it limiting you? Is it causing you to not do things the way you want because you're afraid that you will react in a certain way? Um, maybe it's, it's stopping you from having a loving relationship, or maybe it's a cause of um, problems in your relationship, or maybe is stopping you from becoming close to your kids or being a better parent or, or communicating with your family or getting a better job. There's so many reasons um, why you'd want to address your emotional patterns. So I would say, you know, think about some ways that you may react to things that you see as a pattern you know, are you angry a lot of the time? Are you lonely a lot of the time? Are you jealous a lot of the time? Um, are you overwhelmed or stressed a lot of the time? And then see how it's affecting your life. You know, sometimes seeing how something affects your life can give you more of a reason to want to change it. So when it feels like it's tough to change, you go back and you go, 
I really want to change it because, because I want to have a better relationship and this is stopping me from doing it. So then the question becomes, how do you do that? That's like the $64,000 question, right? How do you change an emotional pattern? So in my experience, um, I've done a lot of different things. One is I've done some journaling to write down, say, the situation and how I react to it. And sometimes that leads me to noticing that that's the way I reacted when I was a kid. Um, in fact, let me just tell you a story about something that happened just recently where I helped myself um, with the help of others to change an emotional pattern. So something recently was happening with one of my kids and um, I was feeling uncomfortable with it. I was feeling uncomfortable with the decisions that were being made or talked about. Um, and because my child is a minor, I have um, those powers as a parent to step in and intervene. And, but it's always tricky when you're a parent, right? Like when do you intervene? When is it a time to let your child just do things on their own? And when is it time to go, wait, whoa, whoa, this is not working. So if I, I felt like it was one of those times where I was like, wait, 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 we need to talk about this. And so um, I started to feel as we were discussing all this, that I didn't have support, that that I didn't, I was like the only person who was asking questions and not feeling comfortable and not wanting to go forward. And I realized that that is very common for me, that that is a very common pattern, that scenario. I feel uncomfortable um, and I'm the only one and everyone else wants to go forward and I wanna kind of just stay where I am or go another way. And I start to feel isolated and I start to feel like people are treating me like I'm overreacting and I start to feel defensive. And I wanna just, you know, kind of put my heels in the dirt and not go any further. Um, and I have a hard time talking about it. I don't feel safe talking about it. That's the other part of the pattern is, I don't feel like I wanna go forward. I feel like I'm being pressured to, and I don't feel safe to talk about it. Those three, are this huge like ball of wax that feels so familiar to me. And I can trace it back to when I was a really little kid and feeling really uncomfortable in a situation and feeling very isolated and very alone and very like I was the only one who was going through it. And then I couldn't talk about it with anybody. Even though looking back, I could have, but as a little kid, I did not perceive it that way. So once I recognized, oh my gosh, this is really from my past, that helped, it helped. It, it didn't change anything, but it changed my mindset about what was going on because it, it took away some of the, the sting and the power from the present situation because I realized, oh, this is an event that's happening that's triggering a pattern in me that's it's time for it to change it's time for it to go differently and that's why this is happening it's not that i'm being punished it's not that um my life's going into the toilet. It's not um, something I did that was bad or wrong. The world is not against me because that's how you feel, right? You feel like everything's against you when you have this emotional pattern come up, but you don't know, know it's an emotional pattern. You just feel like this event is like, Ugh. so it didn't mean that the event itself was any less important or should be dismissed, but it just gave me a little like, oh, wow, here's an opportunity to do some real expansion work around this pattern. So I kind of got a little excited. I know that sounds weird, but I got a little excited. And as I was processing this and it happened in, in during different times over time, um, I was talking to a friend about it and I was telling her how I was processing these emotions and all this stuff. And she said, you know, Rita, what I've noticed about you is that you know, when anytime you have one of these situations, especially with your family, people who are really important to you, one of the things that you forget that you can do is talk to them. You kind of keep it all to yourself. 
And I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's part of the pattern. The part of the pattern is I didn't feel safe talking about this stuff when I was a little kid for, because in my little kid mind, I didn't feel safe. It wasn't that I wasn't, it was just, that's the way I was experiencing it. And she's like, I know that when you talk to your family about this, it's really going to turn everything around. And so I was like, you're absolutely right. And my type of personality is as soon as I have the idea, as soon as I have the thing, pretty much I want to take action on it right away. Because there's a part of me that's afraid I won't take action on it if I wait. So I take action on it. So literally I got off the phone and within a minute, I had a conversation with my kid about it, about what was going on, what was feeling uncomfortable, where we agreed, where we disagreed. And it wasn't an easy conversation. It wasn't like a happy conversation, but we both came away from it with a feeling like we're glad we talked about it. There are no surprises. Um, we came to a compromise. Um, she wasn't happy. She was kind of disappointed, but she also knew that I was looking out for her and it was coming from a good place. And I tell you, when you're a parent of teens, if they know that, that's huge. <laughs> that's huge. Because, you know, a lot of times when you're talking to your teenager, they're not going to be happy with you. They're just not. They're going to be mad at you. They'll be pissed at you, be frustrated with you. They won't understand you. So the fact that my kid was not happy and disappointed didn't make me happy. But the fact that she knew that it was coming from a good place meant a lot that made it a lot easier. So, so anyway, I broke through that pattern of isolating and not talking about it by talking about it. And I'll tell you what happened. So I did that felt so much better. Still, there was more to happen. And there was more to break up in this pattern. And so I just sat with my feelings in my chair by myself, and just allowed the feelings to come up so I could feel them. And I felt them and I felt them. <clears throat> and then the next day we had an appointment, my child and I. <clears throat> and it went differently than I thought. It was better than I thought. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was better than I thought. We, there are more choices than I thought. And we both made a great decision together. And then it felt like not a big deal at all. Whereas before it felt like a big deal. <coughs> Excuse me. So that in a nutshell is how I broke through this emotional pattern. Now, will it come up again? Yes, it will. I'm sure it will, but it's not going to be as strong. I'll know what to do and I'll break through it again. And that's just the process. So <clears throat> first recognizing that it's a pattern. It's number one. Number two is kind of identifying the parts of the pattern as much as you can. That helps your mind. And then three, processing the emotion. That may take time and patience. And if you need support with any of this, by the way, get support. It doesn't have to be with me, but get support with someone who knows how to do this. You process the feeling. And then after you process the feeling, what are you inspired to do? Maybe you're inspired to do something that then you would normally do with the pattern intact. And so for me, it was having that conversation instead of keeping it all inside and trying to defend myself because it is safe to talk about. I realized it's safe to talk about this stuff or before when I was a kid, it wasn't safe. And, if, and when you're carrying that around, you are like a little kid feeling unsafe the whole time. So I also had to talk to that little kid inside me too and say, I got you. I got you here. You're going to be okay. So I hope this was helpful. Um, please put any questions you have in the comments section. Um, and if you need help, get help. It could be with just talking to a friend or a loved one. It could be a therapist. It could be a coach like me, whoever feels right to you. And I think you're going to do fine. I think you're going to do fine because if you're hitting an emotional pattern, it means it's time to process an emotional pattern and you can do it. So I hope this was helpful. Um, come join the Calm Mom Alliance. If you're not already a member, it's right on Facebook, Calm 
Mom Alliance, just look that up and you'll see the, um, the link will come up in Facebook. Please like and subscribe these videos or subscribe to this channel because that way you're privy to all the different things that I offer here. So sometimes it's talks just like this. Sometimes I do interviews with people who do different things than I do, but we all work with stressed out professional moms. So um, that's all I got to say, I guess. I think that's it in a nutshell. Oh, and also if you're interested in cultivating and breaking through emotional patterns and cultivating self-compassion, get my self-compassion project workbook. It's really great. It's right in back of me. You can see it. It's got lots of space for journaling. It's got lots of questions. It's got lots of exercises. And you'll realize that self-compassion is really key to this whole thing. When you give yourself a break, become your best friend, become emotionally stronger and happier. All right. That's all I got to say right now. Take care. And uh, until next time, bye-bye.